In this two-part mini-series, we'll be heading out of Tokyo to spend the Obon weekend camping in the Yamanashi and Shizuoka prefectures. Over the next four days, we'll be checking out some of the coolest spots around Mount Fuji and the surrounding area. With the summer heat in Tokyo beginning to take its toll, it's about time we escaped the city and enjoyed the mildly cooler climate of the mountains. In the early morning we hit the road and headed for our first destination, Lake Motosu. Located on the northwestern side of Mount Fuji, Lake Motosu is roughly a two and a half hour to three hour, 130 kilometer journey from central Tokyo by car. It's the third biggest lake of the Fuji Five Lake area. Dotted around the lake are three separate campsites, one of which is Camp Koan, our home for the next two nights. This campsite takes the crown as most iconic as it sits on the northwestern edge of the lake, meaning that as you look out across the crystal clear waters, you'll be treated to an unbeatable view of Mount Fuji on the other side. This is actually the very same view that appears on the back of every single thousand yen note. We've just arrived at Lake Matosu and we're now just trying to find a good place to put the tent. We originally planned to go down by the waterfront, but as that's the most uh, scenic view and it's got the best view of Fuji, obviously that filled up fairly quickly and we arrived here a little bit later than we anticipated. But not to worry, there's a nice spot over in the wooded area just next to the lake and you can still see the lake and you can see everything that's going on. So really it's not too bad and we're going to get a little extra bit of cover from the trees because just as we pulled up, obviously in fantastic fashion, it started to rain, so uh, let's go get ready. All right, not bad. Nearly done. We just need to put on the finishing touches with our lovely blue leisure sheet. But just remember, it is easy to treat in lightness and the usage is various. By the time we made it to the camp and set everything up, we only had around three hours until sunset, so we decided to leave exploring the camp until tomorrow and instead use our remaining daylight hours to check out a local must-see viewpoint called Panorama Dai. The entrance to the Panorama Dai Trail is located next to the neighbouring Lake Shoji and was just a short five minute drive away from our camp. Finding the trail itself proved to be a bit more difficult than we previously imagined and we actually drove past it twice before stopping at a local hotel to ask for directions. Located on the western side of the lake, you'll find a small roadside car park and also a bus stop if you're using public transport. A small set of stairs leading into the trees will be the beginning of your one hour hike to the summit. <laughs> Is that again? It's a not proper road. Not a proper road, yeah, I know. You, hear, you heard it here first. This is not a proper road. Whew. So we're now on the trail to Panorama Dai. We just parked up near Lake Shoji. And as you can tell, <laughs> I can't breathe. This hill is so steep and I am incredibly unfit. So yeah, it's good exercise. I'm just very thankful that it's not uh, sunny today quite a lot of cloud and most of this path goes through the trees so uh, I'm going to spare you any more of my grotesque grunting as I try and catch my breath and maybe I'll see you again further up the path as if I don't die first. Unfortunately for my respiratory system things only got worse from here. The further we went up the mountain trail the steeper it got. Traversing our way over jagged rocks, unearthed routes, and through narrow passages, around 40 minutes into the hike, I descended halfway into madness. Nearly there. It finally happened. I've become a shirtless man on the internet. I knew it wasn't, it wasn't too long until that happened. But we found the sign for Panorama Dai and another summit which goes up this way oh god I'm so wet as well I feel like all you do on this channel is just watch me sweat 
can complain about how hot it is. But I think we're maybe 20 minutes, 20 minutes away up this path, possibly. Thankfully, my estimations were correct, and within another 15 minutes, we had finally reached the peak of Mount Eboshi and the incredible viewpoint of Panorama Dai. Most of the mountain is covered in trees, except for this small secluded spot, which allows you to gaze out over the valley and lakes below. So here we have most of what you're supposed to be able to see from the top of this viewpoint. Uh, from left to right we have all the five lakes of the Fuji Five Lake area. On the left, Lake Yamanaka, which you can see is 982 metres in altitude uh, from sea level, so it's the highest lake. Next across we have Kawaguchi, which is the lowest, and then the next three we have Lake Saiko, Lake Shoji and Lake Matosu, which is where we're staying. Uh, Lake Matosu, you can see, is the deepest of all the lakes, around 100 metres at its lowest point. And you can certainly feel that when you swim in the water, the shelf of the floor, it just drops off pretty quickly. So that's why when you're staying there, they do advise, actually they don't advise, they tell you, you're not allowed in the water without a life jacket. So be prepared. If you come and visit here, I hope the view is better for you. Um, although it's not too bad, even on a cloudy day, you can still see some good stuff. You can see uh, Lake Shoji down the bottom and there's the fishing boats and a couple of bridges and roads and things and just the air up here is very fresh, very clean. So all in all, I'd say it's definitely worth the hour long hike up here. With the mountain conquered, professional hiker thoroughly struck off my potential careers list and my clothes dangerously saturated with sweat. It was time to head back to the camp for the night and end the day by stuffing our faces with the most British thing you could possibly eat on a Japanese camping trip. With our stomachs full and the daylight gone, it was time to hit the sack and recharge ourselves for tomorrow's activities. So, if you think that I uh, look tired right now, it's because I am. It's 4.47 in the morning, uh, but sunrise is in 15 minutes. So I'm going to head up to the top of the path in a minute, set up my camera and see if I can catch some of that famous Fuji sunrise. Uh, the clouds have disappeared, thankfully, from last night, so there's a nice view. And uh, I think, yeah, it's going to be pretty special. So as predicted, the sunrise was pretty cool. I uh, found a nice spot. I pitched up my camera, but obviously as soon as I did that, the clouds all kind of rolled in um, and completely covered the view of Mount Fuji. Uh, the mood was pretty nice though. You know, it still looked nice and good colors and all that kind of stuff. So I'm now down by the lake and I'm actually looking across and Fuji has reappeared uh, in the distance. It's still a bit misty. The bottom is completely covered in clouds, but the top is poking out um, and it's just a bit of a hazy silhouette at the moment. Doesn't appear to be any snow on the mountain though, which makes sense because it's August and it's bloody hot. So it's about quarter past seven now, so pretty early still, but we need to get our stuff uh, prepared and head out pretty soon. We're gonna take a quick half an hour drive south to Shirito Taki, which is a waterfall, very famous. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can get there before the crowds and enjoy it in some peace and quiet before the busloads of tourists start piling in. So, let's go. Back in the car again, we're now off to Shiraito Waterfall. Quietly nestled in the small town of Fujinomiya, it's one of the region's most popular spots. If you arrive at Shiraito early, you'll have a good chance of beating the crowds and your pick of empty parking spaces. For the paltry sum of 300 yen, you'll be able to leave your car for as long as you please. The walk to the waterfall itself is also pretty short, from the closest car park, you'll be down by the basin and looking in wonderment within a matter of minutes. So as you can probably see behind me, we are now at Shiraito Waterfall and it's so loud, uh, I'm having to scream into the microphone. So I don't know whether or not you can actually hear this or not. But yeah, it's very, very nice secluded spot. 
the waterfall actually goes around for 125 meters around the top and it's a 20 meter drop down so obviously the water comes down with quite a force makes quite a noise but the water itself is super super clear uh, and the people paddling around in it um, and it's just really refreshing especially on a, a hot day like this uh, in this little ravine where the waterfall is it's a nice little respite from the summer sun so now we're going to head a little bit further down and uh, see if we can get a better view of the actual waterfall itself. Further down the path is a bridge that crosses the small stream. From here you can get a much more inclusive view of the entire ravine. From the air you can see just how secluded this spot actually is. Once you're done with the main attraction, Continuing up the path will lead you to the less renowned but still impressive Otodome waterfall. The view of Otodome is slightly less accessible than Shirito, so it'll require a little bit of standing on some rickety wooden steps to get a good angle. The slightly less risky option is to look down from the cafe seating area atop the cliff. We're now set up Otodome waterfall, a nice little cafe right next to the cliff, and I'm eating the world's most grotesque ice cream. I've been outside for about 10 seconds and uh, it's already starting to melt, so I better get tucking down. Both waterfalls are in fairly close proximity, but there isn't much else to see in the area once you've checked them both out. As the day progressed, my energy levels were waning due to my incredibly poor decision to wake up at half four that morning. For the remainder of day two, we decided to head back to camp and take things slow. As well as being an iconic landmark for its Fuji view, Lake Batosu is also an all-round lovely place to spend a relaxing day. Around the camp, there are tons of activities you can partake in. On the lake you can go windsurfing, ride in a kayak, take a bike ride around the local area, or maybe just set up a barbecue and grill up a storm. As I mentioned earlier, campers can actually pitch up their tents on the beach of the lake, but you need to get there early if you want any chance of finding a space. Honestly though, with not being a fan of sleeping at a 20 degree incline, the wooded area was the much more favourable and level option. The end of day two marks the halfway point of our camping adventure, so join us next time as we head off to our next campsite, go on safari, and try out a spot of cave exploring. If you don't want to miss the next episode, make sure to subscribe to Canton Japan and hit the bell notification for an update as soon as we upload it. If you've got any other tips for fellow travellers, then please leave them down in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.